The Lord be with you. A couple of names you will hear in the prayers today. Uh, Denny Hobine is in, is in intensive care t today. Um, they don't quite know yet. He went to the hospital yesterday. They don't quite know yet what is going on with him, but we'll find out. Uh, you'll hear, oh, and Ann Wilbur is in intensive care. Ann has been uh, dealing with a lot of issues, uh, but um, she's at uh, mercy. Then you'll hear the name Rick Allwert in our prayers for sympathy. Rick, um, if you didn't see the Facebook posting, Rick died yesterday rather unexpectedly. Um, he had fallen earlier in the week, and uh, I think we all know Rick to be healthy enough to survive a fall, but uh, he had um, a sore back all week long and uh, was in the intensive care, a couple, uh, not intensive care, just in the emergency room where they checked him out and sent him home. But um, yesterday morning at about 10.40, he died. Today is Reformation Sunday, the Sunday before Reformation, before the day. Uh, the actual day is October 31st, which is next Saturday. So the Sunday before, we always celebrate and observe the Reformation. So we'll see what the Reformation means for us today. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page three of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose name is majestic in all the earth, who rescues and heals in every time of trouble, who does all things well. Let us come before God seeking forgiveness in life. Steadfast and saving God, have mercy on us. We confess to you all the ways we turn from you and harm one another. In your compassion, forgive our sins and heal our hurts. Bring forth from us a harvest of righteousness, the fruits of gentleness and peacemaking, the sheaves of wisdom and justice, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, receive mercy and find grace in your time of need. Your transgressions, your sins are forgiven. God's love is he a healing balm for your wounds. Rejoice, for God raises you up to new life in Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For the least, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. says it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God for no human being will just be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law for through the law comes the knowledge of sin but now apart from the law the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe for there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in, Je in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effected through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously, previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? it is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, 
If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come forward. Good morning. I'm going to teach you about the solas of the Lutheran Reformation. Do you know what sola means? Alone, only, solo. So, we're going to, so the alones of the, the Reformation. We are saved. They emphasize three. There's actually five. They emphasize three. And they're right here on this Luther Rose. And you can, I have one for each of you. Isn't that exciting? Henry, don't you think that's great? Here, Lucy. Oh, it was upside down. <laughs> How can you tell? Oh, I guess you can tell by the cross. Okay. We're saved by word alone. <clears throat> when we think of God's word, we think of the Bible, don't we? And it is the Bible that tells us all about God's love for us and His grace for us. So, His Word alone, Word also refers to promise. We have confidence in the promises of God. We accept it, we understand it, we receive it by faith alone. And it's all done not by anything we have done, but by God's grace alone. Grace alone, we believe, faith alone, and it all comes to us from God's Word alone. The three solas of the Lutheran Reformation. Take and put this, tape it to your mirror. Do you have a mirror in your bedroom? Tape it to your... Well, then tape it to your wall if your parents allow you to use tape on your walls. And remember, word alone, faith alone, grace alone. Those three things. And quiz the adults. See if they know those three words, okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for salvation that comes to us by, by grace alone, through faith alone, and we hear that in the Bible, your word alone. Amen. Amen. You may go back to your seats. And you can keep that, Henry. No, oh, Zach, you can keep it. <laughs> I want you to keep it.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In our gospel lesson, the Jews that Jesus spoke to, the Jews that had believed in him, were a little offended when Jesus said that in him they would find freedom. They were offended because they're going, well, we haven't been slaves to anyone, even though in their 1,800-year history at this time, they had been uh, under oppression by one government or another except for 150 years. And even as this was written, they were oppressed by the Romans. But they had... So they were offended. They were offended because they believed that they somehow had some spiritual freedom. And that's why Jesus said, but anyone who sins is a slave, a slave to sin. We have a great example of someone who understood slavery and the slavery that Jesus was talking about. And that is the Apostle Paul in Romans 7. And he says this. It talks about his inner conflict. I do not understand my own actions. I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer that I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. I do not do the good I want, but the evil that I do not want, I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it's no longer I that, do, that does it, but it's the sin that dwells within me. He understood this bondage. And it's interesting that he's someone who plagued the church and was so strong in his views before he became a Christian that he was slave to those passions too. Martin Luther was a slave to his passions, his fears, his sense that God had condemned him and that he could never live up to God's law and, and find hope and salvation. And when he finally found the truth of the gospel, that he's saved by grace, it's not by works, and he can't boast about it. No one can. It is a free gift of God. When he realized that, that's what got him into trouble. And in uh, 1521, he stood before his accusers. They had laid out his books with everything he had written. And they trapped him with two questions. Martin Luther, are those your books? Did you write those books? The second question, are you ready to recant what you have written? And we know, you know, the first an answer was easy. Yes, I wrote them. And the second answer has become famous in history. I cannot and I will not recant, he said. I'm captive to the word of God. Here I stand, I can do no other. God help me, amen. Notice what he said. I cannot and will not recant. I am captive. Luther found freedom in Christ, but he found that that freedom he gave up one freedom to be bound to another, to be bound to the Word of God. And that's a paradox. The Lutheran Church is filled with paradox. Our theology is filled with paradox. Luther's theology was filled with paradox. The paradox is 
to give up slavery to one thing, in this case, sin. I became a slave. I become a slave to another. God's Word. And it's in God's Word that we hear that promise. And we're saved by grace alone. And it comes to us through faith alone. How? By Christ alone, who died on the cross alone. So we're captive to God's Word, free to live now, free to truly love, free to truly give and serve, serve our neighbor. It's a paradox. Give up one slavery to become enslaved to another. Luther learned another truth. It was after that meeting where he was condemned, even condemned to death. And he was kidnapped and spirited away to Wittenberg University. Excuse me, Wittenberg Castle. And as he sat in that castle, he began to feel sorry for himself. And he became very depressed. He felt that God had abandoned him. Here he stood up for the word of God. But now he's hidden in a castle. And he had all those dark thoughts that God had abandoned him and made him into a fool for trusting. A very dark time. And it was in reading scripture that the realization came to Luther that God never really abandoned him. In fact, the God who embraced him and held him in his arms when he was baptized, he said, even in this dark hour, my God embraces me and holds me in this dark hour. And that, Martin Luther found tremendous freedom again to start giving his life. At that point, he translated the New Testament from Greek and Latin into Koine German, so any German could pick up the Bible and read it. So we are set free today. If we're free in Christ, we're free indeed. Why? Because even like Martin Luther, in the darkest of the night, we know that God's still there, embraces us, lets us know that no matter what happens, everything is fine because we're in God's warm embrace. It's a story of a pastor in Nigeria who was captured by some radical Muslims. His village was captured and he was uh, taken prisoner. And uh, he was able to escape. And his friends asked, weren't you afraid? And he said, I was terrified. Terrified that for my, I was afraid for my family, that they would never see me again. I was afraid for the pain that was going to be inflicted as they tortured me. They wanted him to recant his faith and uh, therefore lead the village then as a Muslim. And he said, but when the beating began, a strange peace came over me. I realized I was a child of God. He realized what Martin, Martin Luther realized. That he was a child of God that nothing could harm him. And he said, then I looked at my captors and I realized 
that they were the real prisoners, bound by fear, bound by hatred, bound by their murderous desires. And he said he really had compassion for them. And he wanted them to know about Jesus. And even in, in meager attempts, he tried to tell them about the love of God. Battle started to ensue on the other side of the village, so the, his captors left him alone, and his friends came and set him free. They became refugees. But he knew the freedom there is in Christ. He knew it in the darkest time of his life. That God in Christ cares for us, holds us in his warm embrace, forgives our sin, and gives us the power now to love freely, to serve freely. Amen.
standing together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made alive with God in Christ, we pray for the Church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Reforming God, renew the covenant that you have made with your people. Write your law on our hearts, so that all we say and do proclaims the grace you have shown us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Reinvigorate those places that have become desolate and barren through human interaction or na intervention or natural disaster. We lift up the people of Mexico who are in the hurricane's path. For those whose loved ones were killed or maimed in mass killings in Sweden, Nigeria, and Afghanistan. Heal us with your freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Revive those who live under the weight of anxiety, despair, or illness. We remember especially Katie Brady, Linda Brashear, Karen Cleave, Kite Coulter, Jeff Dykman, Shannon Eagleston Leff, April Hollinger, Larry Hopper, Denny Hobine, Jennifer Stilwell Jackson, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Ellen Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, John Reynolds, Amy Robb, Carrie Sykes, Florence Stilwell, Kylie Timmerberg, Ann Wilbur, and Logan Young. Are there any others? We give you thanks, giving God. We thank you for our young people and our young people like Michael Steinecke who confirmed his face. We give thanks for those who were an example of faith and who now have died. Carry the burdens of those who mourn especially the family and friends of Joe Ellen Allen and of Rick Allwert. And lift them up by your compassionate spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Redeem your church from self-serving sins. Turn our hearts to people outside our walls and transform our communities into places where all may find redemption and hope. Lord, in your mercy, gather these concerns and all who are in need into your abundant care, O God, remembering your promise of mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give him thanks to who the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is of the new covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thanks, O God, that you welcome us to your table and satisfy our deepest hunger and thirst. By your gifts of word and holy meal, strengthen us to take up the cross as we go about our callings in this world, following after Jesus Christ, our servant Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to encourage you to read your messenger and remember there is trunk or treat tonight I want to urge you to come listen at the Central Christian Church this afternoon at three o'clock Springfield Mid-America Singers is singing along with the Springfield Boys Choir under the direction of Daniel Gutierrez and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be uh, oh. the Psalms by Leo Bernstein and uh, some wonderful soloists. So, Yes, that sounds excellent, David. He's the uh, Coxhorn Hospital. There is no end of what you can do today. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take, the love of God that gives us courage and strength, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us.